meeting live, see the notice of meeting posted on whittiertech.org. Um, call to order, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. Here we go. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. To the flag. Of the, the United, United States, States of America, America. into the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under, nation, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty justice, and justice for all. all. Thank you. Okay, public comment. Public comment will not exceed 15 minutes per individual. The individual must state his name and city or town and is limited to three minutes. Uh, is there any public comment? Okay. Moving on, approval of minutes. So moved to approve. Okay. All right, roll call vote. <laughs> Mr. Early. Yes. Mr. O'Connor. Yes. Mr. LaBella. Yes. Mr. Irving. Aye. Dr. Testaverde. Aye. Mr. James. Aye. Mr. Fitzgerald. Yes. Mrs. True. Yes. Mr. Osage. Tony, you gotta unmute. Uh, you skipped me as well. I'm a yes. Oh, I didn't see you there, Scott. Yeah. Same here. Chip was here. Okay. I was going by the previous meeting. Uh, Treasurer's report. Move to accept. Second. Mr. Early. Yes. Mr. Wood. Yes. Mr. O'Connor. Yes. Mr. LaBella. Yes. Mr. Irving. Aye. Dr. Testaverde. Yes. Mr. O'Connor. Yes. Mr. James. Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald. Yes. Ms. True. Yes. And Mr. Sage. Yes. Okay. Old business. There is no old business posted. Uh, reports and communications. Alyssa. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Superintendent Lynn, and all their school. The Multicultural Club is currently designing a collaboration to promote the club and diversity at Whittier. They're making plans for a My Name, My Identity campaign that promotes the correct pronunciation of names. By pronouncing names correctly, a sense of belonging can be fostered. In Skills USA, the district qualifying exam will be given on March 11th. Students who are in school that day in either academic or vocational will be testing at Whittier. Students who will not be physically present will be taking their exam remotely at home. Results will be available two to three days later. Students who qualify by achieving a gold, silver, or bronze place may have the opportunity to represent Whittier at the state conference in April. Skills USA has been meeting remotely every day after school in their Google Classroom in preparation for March 11th. Peer leaders will be leading study groups for freshmen and WA students that may need extra help with a specific subject area. Peer leaders will be meeting to start organizing and they hope to have their first study group sessions next week. Chess Club is experiencing difficulty getting a time that will work for all members with the change in the school schedule. They are now meeting Thursdays virtually from three to four. DECA just wrapped up their state competition. The students can participate in leadership training and information sessions this week via Zoom. They had four students compete virtually and results will be received on March 18th. Students that place at states will advance to DECA International, which will be held virtually this year. Interact Club completed a Valentine's card drive with Key Club and Student Government. The cards were designed by club members and printed by graphics. They were able to compete 
to complete and distribute 800 cards to assisted living facilities throughout the district, as well as Salisbury Meals on Wheels and the Haverhill Police Department. They will continue this activity for Easter. This club is also looking to host a virtual walk, which will be open to all students in the they can sign up and ask for pledges. All donations would go to the Relay for Life community event. The UN Club has been meeting on a weekly basis. They have been having virtual debates and are preparing for an online conference on March 6, 2021. The conference sponsored by the United Nations Association of Greater Boston is focused on the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Their vir next virtual club meeting is Thursday, March 11th at 3 p.m. Student government is continuing to meet regularly and plan upcoming events and activities. They are currently in the middle of our spirit week with two different themed days, Decade Day and Class Color Day. Students are encouraged to participate by dressing up and earning points for their grade during the week. They are planning on participating in the Easter Cards project with Key Club that Key Club is organizing. They're looking forward to warm, warmer weather so that they can look to have more activities for students in the spring. BSA has been meeting remotely on Mondays, so they are now in the process of finding another day to meet as school moves towards more in-person learning. Key Club has only met once in the last month due to vacation. Their numbers are They are working with Interact and student government to hand out Easter cards in the community. They are also looking for other service opportunities. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Uh, are there any questions for Alyssa? Uh, just one. Go ahead, Joanne. I just want to know how did how did Spirit Spirit Week go? <laughs> um, I didn't participate in today, so <laughs> I will definitely be wearing my color on Friday, which is black. So okay. Oh, so yeah, it's it. So kids who are remote are just remote, but kids who yeah go so into school. In person yesterday or today it was Decades Day, and then yeah. tomorrow and Friday is. Are the teachers participating? Um, I a couple, yeah. Okay, it's always the teachers, the teachers have been participating more than the students, I think. A little. <laughs> there was okay, some great good. costumes today. Okay, good. I was just checking. I, I, I always enjoyed that. Thank you, Alyssa. Awesome. Any more questions? Okay, thank you, Alyssa. Moving on, superintendent's report. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Tonight, before you, for informational purposes, I have personnel action um, for the February 2021 vacation boot camp and evening school nurses, um, the resignation of a route bus driver and electrical instructor, um, budget update. As you know, we held a budget workshop this evening, discussed the budget, which contained a 2.42% increase. The public hearing for the FY22 budget is scheduled for Wednesday, April 14th at 6.15 p.m. Um, DESE has announced that all grade, and 10, 11, grade 10 and 11 students will take the MCAS. Um, mm -hmm. They're saying in May of 2021, but that continues to change. So I think that that's a, a moving target. Um, but they are saying that the high school students will be taking an MCAS exam. On Thursday, February 11th, I attended a remote meeting with Commissioner Riley where he discussed the need for more in-person learning for our students. On Thursday, February 18th, I attended the Early College Joint Committee meeting with Chris Leganis, Tia Gerber, Kelly Fay, and Patty Lowell. Um, I am thrilled to tell you that we are now in early college school, which is a huge accomplishment. I think there's only one other vocational technical school in the state that has this designation. Um, and Ms. Gerber and um, Ms. Lowell, you know, I call it grit they would not stop until we got this designation and it's been a two or three years in the making. Um, and really Northern Essex Community College has been a, a great partner with us. So we have officially received the designation as an early college high, um, high school. On Wednesday, February 24th, I attended a remote meeting again with Commissioner mm -hmm. Riley. On Friday, February 26th, I attended the Mayor of Haverhill's Task Force on Public Health. On Tuesday, March 2nd, I attended the remote meeting on MSBA. We finished the required documentation and we are now awaiting um, either the April or June meeting um, to see if we are going into the next stage, which, which would be the feasibility stage. On Thursday, March 4th, I attended the MABA Officers Meet Board of Directors meeting. On, um, 
On Tuesday, March 9th, I attended the remote MBSA meeting. On Tuesday, March 9th, I attended the Merrimack Finance Committee meeting along with Kara Cosmos. Um, beginning on February 22nd, just a little background since our last meeting, um, our students began eating lunch here in the building. It has gone phenomenally well. Um, it's nice to have a little normalcy for our students. They are sitting in classroom desks in the um, cafeteria, in the gym, and in the lobby. Um, I'm happy to report there has been a change. We are participating in the fall season two athletic program. We are so excited for our students um, and practices began this past Monday. I, I do want to address some of the misunderstandings regarding the previous cancellation of fall athletics. You know, at the time of the decision was made, um, there was concern about COVID variants, social distancing in our facilities, and whether it was safe to move forward with athletics. I'm happy to say a month later, things have really, the COVID numbers have decreased significantly. The rollout of vaccinations has improved significantly. It is now time for us to have athletics. It's been a very, very tough year for our kids. And I'm glad that at this point, we can start bringing them back to more in-person learning along with some extracurricular activities. Uh, I'm happy to report that Whittier Tech will have a vaccination clinic on March 25th for our staff. Um, mm. as, as of today, we have 70 staff members that have signed up for this clinic. We're doing the clinic with Conlon Pharmacy and Methuen. Teachers will either be getting the Moderna or the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And we are thrilled to be able to do this for our staff. Um, I really want to thank Patty Lowell and Heather Holmquist um, and Diane Bartolome. I get her, I can never say her last name. Um, Diane at, at the nurse's office for really putting this together and making sure that our staff can all be vaccinated as soon as possible. Um, beginning on March 15th, on Mondays only, sophomores and juniors will return to academics in full cohorts. Um, and these academic classroom students will be at uh, four and a half feet apart. We've been planning for this, that we set up our cohorts um, so that students would be able to come back to school pretty seamlessly um, once we were ready to do that. And I think this is, a, we're dipping our toe in and we're, we're taking the next step um, to that. Um, and then, as you know, the commissioner is really, uh, would like all students to return to school. And I think when we feel like we can do that, we should do that. Um, so we're looking at beginning on March 29th, all vocational week students will return to school for five days a week. So March 29th, during the students' vocational week, they will return five days a week. And that would have us at 75% of our students having in-person learning. Um, and then we're looking at almost a month later on our April 26th, the Monday after April vacation for all our academic week students to return to school five days a week. You know, we will follow the data and if we need to move backwards, we will move backwards. But as of right now, things are looking very promising and it, it's really important for our kids to have more in-person learning. Are there any questions about that? Nope, okay. Um, we've been working with our staff to address concerns that they may have. The biggest concern is obviously social distancing. Um, our classrooms are set up with four and a half feet of distance. Um, the recommended is no less than three. Um, so some of our vocational areas are a little bit tight um, and we've been working to set up barriers and set up plans at some of those workstations. Um, this is not gonna be an easy task, but I think everyone understands the importance of getting our students back to in-person learning. And that is all I have for you tonight. Any questions for the superintendent? Yeah, Dick Early, I have a quick question. You and I talked about it today. What team canceled their first football game? Uh, I believe it was Lawrence. Were they playing? I believe Haverhill. Ooh. Thank you. Just want everybody to know that this can happen quick. 
they already canceled their first game because I believe 10 or 12 of the kids came down with the virus. Mm -hmm. So hey, I think you're, doing, I think you're doing a great job, Superintendent, you and your staff. Thank you. Who, who, which team, Maureen? Lawrence or Haverhill? We don't know. They both. Both. Hmm. You know, I hate to say that in a public meeting because I don't have. I understand. I understand. So, um, I understand. You know, but I think we have to be aware yeah. that this could happen at Whittier. Absolutely. Um, and that's so, why I said it. Thank you. Yeah. I just think it's very positive that you're making this step and yes. keep our fingers crossed. Hey, yeah. Uh, Ms. Lynch, with, with the uh, all in person anticipated, uh, what does that do to the busing? Um, the busing regulations right now have really changed. So it's two students on a bench. Um, it was much harder where we had to have them all spread out, um, you know, more than three feet apart. Um, but right now they can be shoulder to shoulder sitting on a bench. Obviously, it's really important that we continue mask wearing, we continue mm -hmm. the hygiene of washing our hands. Um, you know, at lunches, it, um, again, Mr. Hardy um, has moved all of every classroom desk we could possibly get a hold of is now in our gymnasium. Um, so we're just getting prepared for the next phase into our reopening, but lunches will still be six feet apart um, in order to eat without your mask on. Um, I was wondering, is there still a population of kids that are going to be going remote and what is that going to look like? Is there staff for full time and remote? So we have about 120 students that are remote only. Um, we are encouraging them to come back to school if possible. Um, just because we're a vocational technical high school, you know, they need to have that hands on programming and opportunity. Um, it's very hard to teach carpentry remotely, you know, it's, it's, they need to be here in the building. That being said, students can choose to stay in the remote learning academies if they choose to. So right now it's not a staffing issue. Any more questions for the superintendent? Okay, uh, moving on, Principal Laganis. Okay, good evening, Mr. Chairman, Superintendent Lynch, rest of the school members. Um, as you have heard from the superintendent, uh, Whittier remains committed to slowly and safely bringing back our regular school routines for our students. It's time uh, like these allow us to reflect uh, on our school's mission, our responsibility, which is to continue to make Whittier stronger. Uh, that being said, uh, if you haven't seen our hybrid schedule, uh, please, I, I welcome you to view the hybrid schedule and which way we're going. We've added uh, our Whittier Tech weekly happenings, uh, what's happening during the week on there and a drop down that's on our website. Also our freshmen beginning Tuesday, March 16th will be in their selected shop areas during their vocational week. We know this has been a difficult time for our freshmen, so we're really excited and looking forward to getting uh, them involved in their chosen vocational field. Uh, guidance just finished their middle school interviews like we talked about, uh, Google Meets, all on Google Meets, and they are now cleaning up on uh, the, the makeups, I should say, the makeup interviews, uh, and they're booked through next week and making up and doing those Google Meet interviews. Uh, grab and go meals continue uh, to be available in the school uh, for students who <clears throat> have meals available for the remote and weekend days. Uh, Monday pickup days for breakfast and lunch will continue um, with Kevin Welch's crew uh, on Monday from 10 to 12 noon in the college in entrance. And those meals are provided for the seven days. Uh, moving forward, as you've heard, we're planning on uh, also, our virtual clubs to uh, to certainly transition back in person when that happens. Uh, and also, uh, in the morning, uh, in our live stream morning announcements, uh, we've been um, honoring Women's History Month, uh, you know, this, this, this month. And with trivia questions, so I thank Patty Lowell again. I think her name came up earlier with Superintendent Lynch. Uh, furthermore, during the live streams, 
early in the morning. Uh, we've been showcasing, which is kind of neat, uh, with the video, we've been showcasing vocational areas each morning by live streaming from those those certain areas and we've been traveling through every single day. So it's nice for, you know, the total remote kids, um, some of the freshmen that haven't even been in the building <clears throat> view uh, shop areas uh, and uh, see all the kids and all the staff. So that's all I have for you uh, for tonight. Thank if you. I can just jump in um, during these morning meetings, Mr. Leganis has been known to be dancing <laughs> and doing calisthenics. So um, I told him I never want to see him doing that again, <laughs> but I guess it's still continuing. Yeah. Superintendent Lynch, I thank you for that. Hopefully this will be done dancing in the morning. <laughs> Mr. Leganis. Yes, sir. Um, how, are, how are the freshman numbers looking? Uh, pretty good. Yeah, okay. real, real good. All the numbers are looking good and strong. Um, like I said, you know, they, they, um, Christine Morris and her, and her guidance crew, they just finished up interviews and they're still booked, Mr. James, okay. uh, throughout this week and even on Saturdays with the Google Meets. So they're, they're still coming in with the interviews. Oh, good. Oh, good. good. Any more questions, comments for the principal? All right, let's move on. Uh, business manager, Kara. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Superintendent Lynch, members of the committee. I have a few things for you tonight. The first thing is I'm going to ask you to please approve amendment number three. I had the number wrong in your memo, but it's amendment number three of the food service, food service management contract with the Wittons County Group. Just to remind you, the original RFP was for a five-year program. However, the State Bureau of Nutrition requires that these contracts be approved in one year increments. That's why, therefore, this request is for year four of that initial contract and it needs to be annually approved. I do want to say one thing, and Chris has alluded to this earlier in his presentation. I can't um, express our appreciation enough to Whitson's and our food service manager, Kevin Welch, and staff for their efforts over the past 12 months in ensuring that food has always been available to those students in their families who are in need of it. So I want to publicly thank Whitson's and their crew for everything they've done for our kids and their families this past year. So if you wouldn't mind approving the contract extension. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, any questions or comments on that? Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Early. Yes. Mr. Wood. Yes. Mr. Connor. Yes. Mr. LaBella. Yes. Mr. Irving. Aye. Dr. Testaverde. Yes. Mr. O'Connor. Yes. Mr. James. Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald. Yes. Ms. True. Yes. Mr. Fichera. Yes. Mr. Lesage. Yes. Okay. Uh, for your information, I have a couple of uh, bid results for you. First of all, um, the bid for electrical equipment repairs was awarded to CE Power Engineered Services, LLC. They were the lowest responsible bidder and it came in, in the amount of $31,837.60. Every year, as you know, we have the electrical system tested here. And as Ms. Lynch often tells you, this is a 50 year old building. And this year we found that we needed to replace some breakers. So that's what that bid went out for to have those breakers and they will be replaced um, on a day during April vacation week. The second was the bid for our school security services. And this was awarded to Merrimack Yard Service. Again, they were the lowest responsible bidder. The bid is for a three year contract with an option for a one year extension. The three year contract totals 666,000 $786. Are there any questions on you? And finally, I just wanted to uh, let the committee know we were notified on February 2nd that the um, we received um, certification of our excess and deficiency account, and it was certified in the amount of $999,000. Well, and that uh, is all I have for you this evening. Um, we need to take a vote on the bid results. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. 
Any more questions? Yeah, is that the same company we have now? Or is it a different company? Yeah, it's the same company. Same company. Uh, roll call, Mr. Early. Mr. Early. Okay, Mr. Wood. Yes. Ms. O'Connor. Yes. Mr. Labella. Yes. Mr. Irving. Aye. Dr. Testaverde. Yes. Mr. O'Connor. Yes. Mr. James. Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald. Yes. Ms. True. Yes. Mr. Fichera. Yes. Mr. Osage. Yes. Okay. It really says yes also. Okay, I asked you, you were the first one. I know, I had it on mute, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, committee chairperson. The school committee self-evaluation. We've only received six back. So if everybody could try to get those in as soon as possible. It's on, I believe it's on the Google. Is it on Google, Lisa? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then you just fill it out and click it and it goes back. Uh, yeah. April annual agenda items. Uh, the reorganization of the committee. Are we going to uh, move that? Yes, we want to move the reorganizational meeting from April 12th to April 14th. At 6 p.m.? Um, uh, Brett? Yes. Excuse me, is that a remote meeting? Yes, it will be a remote meeting. Okay, just checking. What time? Six. Six p.m. Uh, do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, we need a. We need the writ, written motion. Motion. Motion to move the annual organization meeting from April twelfth to Wednesday, April 14, 2021, at 6 p.m. Actually, we were supposed to vote on it down at the end, but we got that out of the way. <laughs> okay. Uh, next month, we'll review the annual agenda, review of the school committee goals, the variance analysis, and I did receive a letter from the superintendent superintendent wishing to uh, commence negotiations for a successor. Um, a, a successor contract, not successor a successor contract. contract. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, okay. I'm successor agreement. Okay. Successor agreement. Um, I mean, I'll make a motion for that. Yes, please. Motion to where is it? Oh, I just had motion to instruct the chair to send a letter to the superintendent notifying her that the committee wishes to commence negotiations for a successor agreement. Second. Okay, any questions? Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Early. <clears throat> yes. Mr. Wood. Yes. Ms. O'Connor. Yes. Mr. Labella. Yes. Mr. Irving. Aye. Dr. Testaverde. Yes. Mr. O'Connor. Yes. Mr. James. Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald. Yes. Mrs. True. Yes. Mr. Fichera. Yes. Mr. Lesage. Yes. Okay. And we voted on the, uh, we've already voted on the annual organization. We took that out of order a little bit. Uh, can, yes. can I just jump in? Um, yep. So in, in the event that we will have to um, not have remote meetings anymore, uh, Mr. Hardy and I spoke earlier today that we will put be putting shields um, on everyone's desk so that we can, you know, hopefully when, when things die down or when the governor tells us we need to meet in person, um, that we will be ready to move forward with that. But there's a, there is a plan in the works. Yes. 
Um, can we ask, we have been doing remote and um, it's been working out and I think it's been more than satisfactory. A number of years ago, we talked about um, having some people, if they were unable to come to be able to do remote, is it possible to be able to discuss that so that we could really think about having it um, open to uh, us calling in if we were in a different place or were unable to come because we were ill or whatever. Um, so I'd like to put that on the table for discussion, at least in the future, if not at this meeting, at another meeting. So Maureen, if you could kind of put it on an agenda for discussionary purposes, please. Right. I think it would have to go through policy, um, but I'll start working on that. Thank you. The, the state has given that authority to the, uh, the chair and the superintendent, but we can take that in policy. I believe that we were instructed several years ago by the attorney general that we could do that. You'd have to, you'd have to be a president and a roll call vote at the beginning and be through the end. And so noted, I believe. I think the, the last chair before she left was uh, gonna bring that to the table. Uh, even though she was against it initially, I think she was uh, for it toward the end. So something we should look at. Yeah. yeah, Joanne, I'm glad you brought that up because not everyone will get vaccinated. Um, it's going to be a while for me. Oh, you're young. <laughs> no, I'm not, but I still have to wait. Oh, yes, you are. I still have to wait. Okay. Uh, anything else, Maureen? Okay. Uh, subcommittee reports. Executive. Uh, there's minutes in the meeting. Do we have a Move motion? To accept. Move to accept. Second. Second. Uh, any questions, comments? Roll call vote. Mr. Early? Yes. Mr. Wood? Yes. Mr. O'Connor? Yes. Mr. LaBella? Yes. Mr. Irving? Aye. Dr. Testaverde? Yes. Mr. O'Connor? Yes. Mr. James? Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes. This is true. Yes. Mr. Fichera. He's on mute. Oh, uh, okay. I, I see All him, right. but he's not on. All right. Uh, Mr. Lesage. Yes. Okay. Instructional personnel. We Dr. Testaverde. We have not met, and uh, I think Maureen has been keeping us up to date on what's happening with the. Uh, uh, reopening and, and the issue of school attendance. So I don't think there's anything, but um, we can talk about it again next month and see what Maureen wants to talk about in re regard to something for the fall, if necessary, or anything sooner due to the changes in the status of in-person instruction. Okay. Plan operations. Uh, Mr. Tucker's not here. Um, Mr. Hardy, would you like to, is there anything you'd like to tell the committee? Um, just so you know, we, we are going forward every day cleaning and disinfecting the school and keeping everything as safe as we can. Um, it's been a long process and uh, long days, but we are doing it and uh, I feel as we're doing a great job. That's, um, that's about it. Uh, maybe you could tell the other committee members, I know. Uh, you know, the status of the field and that for those of you. The status on the field? Yeah. Um, yeah, this day, the, um, the turf field cleared off. Um, uh, I went down and cleared out a little bit of the field on Saturday, opened up some areas um, and let Mother Nature do the work. And it, it worked. And it's they're out there practicing. And uh, we're all looking forward to sports here at Whittier. Okay, great. Thank you for doing that. So the, the drainage work, Mr. Hardy, the drainage is okay. Yep, drainage is working great. Um, great. Field is in great condition, um, and it, it's nice to have kids out there. It, it is really nice to see them out there uh, uh, stretching, exercising, and getting ready to play. Great. Thank you. Uh, policy, Mr. Irving. Mr. Murphy, can I just jump in oh, for one yeah. second? 
Yep, I, sure. think, I think it's really important to know um, the job that Mr. Hardy and his crew have done. I'm glad he's here. There has not been one case of in-school transmission of COVID-19 here in the building. That's awesome. And um, we have had plenty of cases, um, but all the cases have been community-based or family-based. Um, his crew have done a, a phenomenal job making sure that this is a safe place for teachers to teach and for students to learn. So um, we all feel very comfortable with the cleaning and the sanitation that is happening here in the building. So hats off to you, Mr. Hardy. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Irving. Yeah, we have not met, but it sounds like we uh, probably should have a, a brief meeting. I uh, wonder if the superintendent, Elisa, could check with the uh, MASC on the uh, remote uh, learning for school committees or remote uh, meetings for school committee. And also, the, I believe the attorney general came out with something earlier. So <coughs> um, could we do before the next meeting? Sure, we can do that. So if you set the time, um, probably don't need too much time. Yeah, why, why don't we say 6.15? All right, six. Oh, six, actually, that's I, we can't do that because on yeah. April 14th, we're doing the the um reorg. We got the, budget, <laughs> we got the budget and the reorg that night, right? Mm -hmm. well, how about if we could do 5 45, 15 okay. minutes? We have a uh, grab and go meals for that. <laughs> meals on wheels, Charlie. Meals yeah, on really. wheels. All right, so 5 45, and you'll check the material we need and send it to us. Yes, all right, thank you. We should plan to have a, uh, once we're running full time or maybe next year, a, a kind September. of a reunion dinner for for our a discussion of opening the school because we're missing out on our annual meeting. Selfish as it may sound. Two years in a row. Yeah, right. September will be good. <laughs> uh, meeting date. Oh, do you Mr. Murphy? Yes. Can we go back to salary negotiations? Oh, okay. We do need to have a meeting for that. Could oh, okay. Skip can that. we look at March 23rd at three o'clock? Mr. Early, can you make a three o'clock meeting, members? What day is that? A Wednesday. March oh, what's the date? The 23rd. 23rd. March. Yeah, I'll make it. You just send me the paperwork. I, I can't make it. Okay. I'll be at the TD. Maureen, I think I think the Wednesday is the twenty fourth. Oh, the twenty fourth. I'm looking at a calendar. Yeah, Wednesday okay. is the twenty fourth. Everything on the twenty. Oh, it is. I can make it. Okay, great. <laughs> my mistake works out in my favor. <laughs> okay. I can make it. Okay. I can make it as well. Great. I'm on that too, right? Yes, I can make it. Perfect. Uh, all right, so meeting dates. 324, we've got the salary. Uh, April 14th, 6 p.m., we get the reorg meeting. 615, we have the public hearing for the FY22 budget. And at 630, we have the regular school committee meeting. 545, you have policy. Oh, 545 policy. A lot going on that day. Uh, there is no new business posted. And we do need to go into executive session. You want me to read the motion? Yes, please. A motion to enter into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation <clears throat> as an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigation position of the school committee. And upon completion of executive session, we will adjourn. Right, if you just give me a moment to shut down the live stream, please. All right, we get a vote on that. We have to vote. Uh, Mr. Early. Yes. Mr. Wood. Yes. Ms. O'Connor. Yes. Mr. LaBella. Yes. Mr. Irving. Aye. Dr. Testaverde. Yes. Mr. O'Connor. Yes. Mr. James. Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald. Yes. 
Mr. Uh, Mrs. True. Yes. Mr. Fichera. Yes. Mr. Lesage. Yes. 